Hello and welcome to another edition of Interview with the Author. We're here um, on the Chalk Solace YouTube channel and I'm pleased to introduce, we have um, an author here by the name of Rick Hill. Um, hello Rick, how are you doing? Hi John, yeah good, uh, doing well this morning. Yep, thanks. Very good. So Rick has uh, written this book, Deep Roots of Resilient Disciples, Principles and Practices for a Life of Lasting Faith. And I am reading this at the moment. I haven't read the full thing, Rick. I'm about That's halfway okay. through, but it's definitely a good read. Um, and we'll talk about that in, in a moment about your book and, and how it came about. But firstly, Rick, can you introduce yourself? Um, tell us where you're from. Um, how are you involved in the Christian community? Maybe a short testimony as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so who am I first? Uh, yeah, I'm Rick. I'm married to Sarah, who's a special needs teacher with, with two young sons. And we live just outside Belfast here in Northern Ireland. Um, I suppose in terms of Christian ministry, I've served in a variety of roles over the last 15 years. So I spent a decade in youth ministry, um, some of that time with Scripture Union and then working in, in my local church. And then for the last six years, I've worked for the Presbyterian Church in Ireland. Um, so uh, right across Ireland, trying to resource churches, I guess, in the areas of discipleship mainly, and then more recently leadership as well. And um, as well as that, I'm plugged into local leadership. So I'm an elder in, in Carn Money Church, which again is just north of Belfast. And I'm, I'm on staff there 10 hours a week at the minute, uh, just preaching and, and coordinating some discipleship stuff. So yeah, that's a bit about me. I'm, I'm a keen runner as well. So some of those analogies find their way into the book as well. In terms of faith story, um, I think if I'm honest, John, I'll probably tell this differently than I did maybe 10 years ago. I yeah. think if I'd met you a decade ago, I might have told you that I grew up in church, rebelled as a teenager, had a dramatic encounter with God during a worship event when I was 16, gave my life to Jesus and the trajectory of my life utterly changed. And I think some of that, it, that that's true. But I think with the benefit of hindsight, I now realize just how much spiritual formation had taken place in my heart and life from an early age. Um, and faith was just such an open and natural part of our home and our life so the bible was read to me as a child i caught my first set of bible reading notes age eight and i was encouraged to do them every day um, and i did most right. of the time and uh church church was just a normal rhythm and part of my life so twice on sunday sitting through the evening services as kids we had to because our, our parents led the music in our church and I think Christian life and even leadership was modeled to me. So dad led a youth activity in the church. And, you know, I, I sometimes hear about how, how maybe uh, church leadership sometimes took people's parents away from their house in yeah. childhood. Looking back, I think I realized my parents' faith brought the church to our home as, the, you know, we just met a whole variety of people and, uh, you know, over the meal table or, or, you know, in our home for meetings or young people being around, you know, just doing activities. And I think because of that, I now look back and realize so much spiritual formation happened in me from an early age. And that, you know, even before I had an awareness of it, God was shaping my life, shaping my beliefs, I suppose. And um, I did have a period where I significantly walked away from that road, but um, yeah, I, I guess that's I can't I can't talk about my spiritual journey without talking about those those early years I suppose yeah. as well. Yeah, no, no, that that sounds uh, kind of similar to my own story. Um, you know, growing up in a in a in a Christian household, and we always, um, as the scripture says, to honor your parents and definitely honor them in in our upbringing, um, in regards what they've done, um, even behind the scenes with you know praying mothers and praying fathers into our lives. I'm sure there was plenty of prayers for us as well. So yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Uh, your story kind of um, can be similar to mine in, in, in ways. And that you mentioned also uh, when I was reading the book, um, I was glad to, to hear you mentioning about running. I, I like to run myself, even though I haven't in a while now, I must get back <laughs> back to it. The, that's a prompt. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you mentioned about um, even uh, I believe it was, uh, you know, Jesus going going outside and, and up the mountain to pray, you know, and stuff in, in those different circumstances. And sometimes um, the, the, the longer I am a Christian, the more I think um, Christianity is more than just a, a Sunday service or, or, or we divide up our tasks, whether praying, let's go pray now, let's go read the Bible. 
it's so much more a consistent, you know, part of your life, whatever you're doing, basically. Um, so, so it's interesting you you touch on those points in, in your book. And and was it were you in uh, uh, like uh, you you said you were training and uh, discipling people? Were you doing that role before you wrote the book, or was it after you wrote the book did it come out? Of yeah, that? I mean, I suppose in some ways I, I've I've always tried to take a mentality of discipling others. I think from an again maybe even coming back to that story of when I when I uh, had an awareness of Jesus uh, and want uh, and made a decision to follow him as a teenager you know made made an active choice I think from an early age I probably found myself in leadership positions I, I not because of any ability probably just because I was available and I was enthusiastic and, and maybe overzealous in some ways and <laughs> And, and because of that, then I think that caused faith to grow being in, in those type of environments. But I think I've always had this desire to uh, walk with other Christians, whether it's my age or, or those who are younger as well. Um, I suppose I've, I've only written the book in the last year and um, some of it has emerged then out of some of the thinking and the training that I've been doing over the last five or six years as I've trained leaders and, and developed resources across the denomination. So that that's some of it. But I think if I'm honest, I, I, I began to write the book maybe out of a frustration and the frustration arose out of seeing large numbers of what I'll just say is my own generation and below just drop out of church and Christian yeah. faith over the last decade. So uh, you maybe especially see that when you work in youth ministry or when you used to work in youth ministry. So, so many teenagers and 20 somethings who, who start it well and then only for them seemingly to move away from Jesus. And I guess that was troubling me and it, it maybe caused me to consider what really helps develop faith for the long haul. So not just for a short season, not just in you know our youth, but actually what what will help us to still be following Jesus 40, 50 years from now. And and that that's maybe sounds like a negative, but on the positive, I think what I've realized is as I've interacted with many others who continue to follow Jesus, yeah, is yeah. that actually I think there's a stronger type of discipleship that's emerging in at this time, maybe because cultural Christianity doesn't really exist anymore you know we're, we're living on the fringes now of society and so those those who still remain I suppose those who still continue to follow Jesus I think actually there's a there's an extra resilience or there's a a depth I suppose to their life and faith so that that's really where some of the imagery in the chapter or sorry the title came from around actually what we need are deep roots and to be resilient disciples um, to yeah, help us to, I, I, to follow I think Jesus. Also, going into that, when we see, uh, you you can all, always take the positives out of, um, say, the the society not being as Christian, because I think Christians are becoming more resilient and because we have to defend our faith. You know, if, 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 if you're living in a Christian bubble with Christians all around you, there, you know, there, there's not much debate, there's not much discussion. You don't often come up against challenges. But um, as you see um, things happening in society, it, it makes you question as well. And you're like, OK, growing up, I believe this. Where where is the backing for this? You know, is what I believed in church true? And as some of some of the things we 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 learned as children mightn't be true. You know, the way the way it's interpreted and you go back. OK, actually, it's slightly different or, or, or in some way. Um, and it's not, uh, as I said before, it's not that the truth is changing, but we are we, we are getting closer to the truth. Um, so it's interesting did you say that in regards to the changing um, uh, way that society is around us and, and we as Christians yeah. have to become more, more resilient D did you find it an easy process to write the book or and and did it, it did it make you go go stronger in your faith um, while researching it yeah I mean I enjoyed writing it is probably the way I might answer that question and there were certainly some chapters that flowed quite quite easily and, and naturally um, I think I learned a lot though as well in the process yeah. around actually just you know what it means to put a, put a book together and uh, and yeah some some of the more sort of what I would say small details nitty-gritty stuff deadlines all of that um, that there were challenges but I wrote most of it actually I'd written a lot of it sort of pre-lockdown but uh, I found that lockdown almost uh, was the stimulus to put, put time into this to actually refine it and, and finish it um, and develop it. So. 
So I'm just going to I'm just going to give a few titles to some of the chapters yep. so people kind of have an overview of, of what this book encompasses. So the first chapter is called Responding to the Call. We have Embracing the Cost, Committing to Community, um, Engaging Culture, uh, Cultivating Spiritual Habits, Stepping into the Commission, Enduring Challenges. If you could just um, uh, talk maybe about some of those topics and kind of the overarching theme of the book and and if you want to go deeper into any specific area yeah thanks um so yeah the, the book is basically exploring 11 principles or practices that i think will help to develop resilient discipleship i i, I should say by no means i think this is an exhaustive list you know yeah. it's not the only 11 there may be others people want to add and in some ways i think anyone who writes a book wants to spark a conversation so um, but, but these are 11 that kind of came to the fore. I basically look through the Gospels and I explore how each of these are seen in the life of Jesus. And they're a mix of, I mean, the list that you read out there, John, they're a mix of personal. So there's some kind of personal hidden inner uh, principles. And then there's some that are outward and corporate practices as well. So I think some of the ones that are most pertinent to the resilient discipleship conversation are chapter eight where I explore the challenges of you know so really it's I would draw on the parable of the wise and foolish builders and, and talk about uh, how everyone no matter whether you're wise or foolish endures a storm both builders in the story endured a storm and so I talk about actually how do we respond to Jesus how do we how do we relate to God how do we whenever whenever a crisis or a test or a trial comes in our life and I think that is really crucial and in, in that kind of resilient discipleship conversation uh, we maybe meet people who say i was following jesus until this happened or yeah. you know and um, chapter two then is, in a similar vein is, is on understanding the cost and interestingly when I, when I wrote that chapter it was way later in the book and then the more i think we thought about it and developed that we realized this is actually a really key underpinning of resilient discipleship of understanding that if you follow jesus there is going to be a cost and so we put it in quite early. Um, um, so, yeah, those are so cost and challenges are around the, the kind of resilient stuff. I think, again, maybe a key chapter, maybe the one I enjoyed writing the most was the one around the church. So chapter three is about Christian community. Um, I think I, it's trying to write from a really positive angle towards what the church could be or, or, or is in our lives. Um, I'm aware and I do acknowledge the church doesn't always and hasn't always lived up to yeah. God's intention. And, and I acknowledge that. And for, for some people, that's why they've chosen to walk away. And in some cases, we, we have to do better. But also it's trying to point out that I don't think we can be resilient disciples without. We can't do it on our own. There's no such thing as solo Christianity. So I explore that sort of idea of, of what it really means to be part of and not just in picking up what you said earlier, John, not just to be part of the church as in I sit in a seat or I attend yeah. on Sundays, but actually what does authentic Christian community mean? So I think on one side, there's a challenge to people, you know, if, you, if you're trying to do faith without the church, if you're trying to follow Jesus without the church, don't and yes. try to get connected. But I think on the other side, to those who might say, well, we love, you know, we're committed to church and we're there every Sunday, it's trying to also push to say, well, actually, what would it look like to really develop a community that share your faith, you know, where you share faith together and life together as well. So, yeah. And then maybe just to pick up one other theme, um, the, you know, the, I think I'm trying to, I try to underline, there's a couple of chapters that are really around how we relate to the world or culture. So one's called contrast. If I were to be different to the world, one is on, on called, called engaging with culture. And I think I'm trying to underline that the strength of society's discipleship is really strong um, right now. And to help us to realize there's a level of there's a level of discipleship that's happening in all of us. Yeah. Maybe we're being discipled by the world or by social media, or in some cases by by Jesus. And so and so in some ways that that's a bit of a call to to challenge Christians to how we can engage with the culture in a positive way to not let it shape us and form us but also not to withdraw and retreat and hide away either um, so there's a few things there about wisdom discernment um, 
yeah, how we can really engage with the culture um, around us as well. So yeah, th those are just some some things. No, they, they 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 sound great, and as I said, I've been reading it, and um, one of the things that I've been practicing myself, um, one of the habits I, I I had been doing this before I read this was you mentioned about um, putting away your phone for I think one day a week, and in my life I found that a, a, a big difference. Just um, um, you know, kind of getting back to more simple things and and focusing on God, focusing on the Word. And, it, you know, we can live such busy lives, but um, so often, um, as you've written yourself, um, you know, Jesus goes away and has time to himself. You know, we can be, uh, I, I think, yeah, church community is so, so important. And I think especially maybe for, for leadership, leadership, um, they have to be very careful not to do too much you know, having too many, too many programs, especially burning themselves out. I'm sure it's, it's, it's a big issue within leadership that they have to take time, you know, to, to, to go away themselves. Um, I don't know, have you ever read a book by Ray Ortland called The Gospel? But that's a, a very strong book, um, kind of balancing church community and the gospel. And when you were just talking about church there, I, it, the, the book just came to mind myself yeah i haven't read that particular yeah. book by ray but I, i've met ray ray orland and, and i've heard him speak and i'm yeah i'm very thankful for his, his perspective yeah. And yeah no no i i'd recommend it even for anyone watching it um it's mm. a small book I, I read it last year but it it really brings into focus you know how uh, some churches can be very um theological based uh, very biblical which is great and then some other churches are very community based and it's just trying to to get a, in a way a balancing act of the two you know to promote to promote both both, both things um but I, I've, I've so far i've really enjoyed this book uh, anyway and, and i really i really think it's important and you've said this yourself and i've noticed this you're constantly pointing back to jesus you know and we have to make sure as christians that we're not just writing self-help books you know about how to necessarily be a better person but the, the reason and the goal and i just wanted to read out um, something here that you've written. Um, so this is on embracing the cost. When we believe that Jesus is our greatest pleasure, then following him will become our greatest priority. Choosing an eternal perspective over an earthly one requires trusting that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are better than our ways. His purposes are greater than our plans and his answers are above our prayers. And, and, and we, you know, that's that's totally scriptural basis so it's not just rick hill saying that um you know um so it, it's important that we consistently uh look towards jesus in, in, in all all we, we've done um just rick a, a final question um before i keep you too long um are there any any books maybe that have impacted your christian life we always like to hear from people and even this week uh, one of our customers said they really enjoy hearing other people's other Christians uh, kind of books that they would recommend or, or something that has, has impacted them deeply. Yeah, I would almost ask you how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, because, yeah, there's a whole, goodness, I could go through a whole library here and actually uh, at times I get shouted at in the house that more books are arriving and things <laughs> like that. So. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there's some of the classics. Uh, actually, one of the books that has impacted me that I think has really shaped some of the writings, and uh, I mentioned the, the, the chapter on cost uh, in chapter two, in some ways it's probably a bit of a ripoff of some of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's work, The Cost of Discipleship. So I think that's, and, and even in some ways, uh, he wrote Life Together as well. So um, I, I've loved Bonhoeffer's writings. Um, so yeah, there's some classics in there. I, a Belfast boy would have to mention C.S. Lewis, Mere, Mere Christianity, <laughs> Pursuit of God by Tozer, um, Hiding Place, Cory Ten Boom. I've loved, in terms of discipleship, some of the stuff like Eugene Peterson's Long Obedience in the Same Direction, you know, that those, I would probably call those classics. As a young Christian, I remember really, I think in some ways there's different books that help us at different times. And so as a young Christian, I remember grasping the concept of grace through um, it was Philip Yancey's What's So Amazing About yes. Grace and just having my eyes opened, you know, and um, Francis Chan's Crazy Love was a real challenge and an eye opener um, about devote, you know, 
almost read that book when I was 19 or 20 and thought, am I really a Christian, you know? <laughs> so, yes, but yeah. it, was, it was that kind of how devoted am I? Yeah. And then I think just more recently to throw out a few I've read in the last year or two that probably have shaped the writings without maybe even realizing. Um, a book, Transforming Discipleship by Greg Ogden, where he really argues about we've got to go beyond just a, a church, you know, kind of Sunday church engagement that actually discipleship involves being up close with people in our lives and sharing our our faith with them lead by paul tripp a really good book on leadership recently and then the whole uh, emotionally healthy series by pete scazzaro and um, he's just written emotionally healthy discipleship i'm not all the way through it yet but um emotionally healthy leadership brilliant book and and then just one last one to throw in there's a brilliant little book i came across last year called faith for exiles oh yes that, yeah. Yeah, and I mentioned it in my introduction, but it comes out of some Barna research in the US about millennials and 20-somethings and faith. And so in some ways that actually provided me some of the lens for this. Um, they've done the research and then probably what I'm trying to do is write a book to that age group to say um, these are some of the things that I think are really important to help you carry on faith. So, yeah, and honestly, John, that's a short list there. That's uh... <laughs> No, that's great. Um, I, I'm aware of and we have quite a few of those titles already in stock, mm -hmm. but I'll be looking into the others because th that's uh, we're only about a year old, actually a year oh, this September, wow. um, Chuck Solis. Um, and one of the big things um, is asking other people um, their different books that they would recommend. So we have about 50, 60 percent, I'd say, of what you said. Um, yeah. in, and we'll just put the links in below, but I'll definitely look into getting the other titles as well. There's um, one other, actually. I've got to set yeah. on the shelf over here. Beautiful Resistance by John Tyson. I don't know if you've come across him. He's, no, a, he's a pastor based in New York. And it was, yeah, um, yeah it's a, I would say it, it's probably going down the lines of how to, you know, how to stay faithful to Jesus in a, in a really post-Christian context. You know, it's, it's, it's sure. really interesting. So we've been reading that with our church leadership actually recently. That's good. That. That's good. Yeah, I, I like that you, um, you mentioned The Hiding Place by Corrie Ten Boom. I'm just after finishing on the a local Christian radio station, Life FM in Cork. We did the last maybe four months. Every week we've done a chapter um, oh. of The Hiding Place. Um, oh. So that, 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 that has really impacted i think um a few years ago i wouldn't have said i'm a big reader myself um but in the last two years you know i've i've been reading a lot and there's such a it is obviously the bible the bible is the book you know um, um and then obviously we can get deep theological but sometimes you know the it's talking like kari ten boom's life people just talking about their own life. I'm reading another book called Captive in Iran at the moment as well. Um, wow. And it can really bring home as well because I think it's closer to our time. And you can really, you know, Carrie Ten Boom, she's in the Netherlands during World War II. You could picture what's happening and how they lived out, you know, examples. And even in your book, just simple examples of how Christians are living and how, how we use the gospels um, and how we, we actively um grow in faith and and, and uh, try to impact the world so i think these kind of books are, are very important for readers you know to 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 try to get an understanding and they're very good they're very easy as well books to pass on to non-christians mm. that they can get something you know from it as yeah. well um instead of going very deep theological maybe at the start you know yeah and that's that's probably what i said about there's different books at different stages as well yeah. that might that might help us with different things so yeah i agree totally. with that totally that's great rick um is there anything else you'd like to say before we we finish no up? maybe well maybe just to say i mean I, I do have a a guess in mind how this book could be helpful to people i suppose yeah. I, I see this book as something that could be put into the hands of maybe a young leader who's serving in, in church ministry or to you know, a young adult group or, or you know, a, a fairly young or new believer that you're seeking to disciple, you know, it, I, I see it as that kind of, that kind of resource. And my prayer is that it's not just a book that's read by individuals, but actually could become a, a discipling resource, you know, whether it's in small groups or, or as I say, maybe someone reading it over and chatting over a coffee, that that's kind of, so there's questions at the end of each chapter and 
And so, yeah, that's some of the hope and heart of it as well, that it wouldn't just be a personal book, but it could be a, a resource as well. No, definitely. And just for people, again, it's Resilient Disciples by Rick Hill. And yeah, as you touched on, we hadn't touched on this earlier. There are uh, questions at the end of each chapter and they're divided in such a way that definitely I could see a group going through uh, either once a week or maybe once a month, just picking a chapter, discussing the questions. And because you could go further into each chapter with a group and discuss how people in their own lives, um, you know, do these things. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, John. Thanks very much, Rick. Um, so Not thanks well. everyone for watching. Um, and as I said, um, the books that we have in stock that Rick mentioned uh, will be on uh, the links below. Um, and if you just like and share this video and see you next time. God bless.